My name is Nicole. We haven't met before. I typically teach the yoga classes at Forge on Sunday mornings and I'm really missing being there and being with you all to guide you through this practice. So I appreciate you tuning in and checking out this video to still have your practice but at home. And this is my first time recording myself teaching and practicing, so it's going to be interesting, I bet. So what we're going to focus on today with this short practice is the hips, anticipating that people are potentially spending more time sitting at home as work has gone online, school has gone online for a lot of people, um, and with the less ability maybe to be outside and be active, the hips may be a little bit tighter right now. So we're going to do some postures to support in opening up the hips. We'll move quite quickly through this practice. So if you have the opportunity to practice these poses again but stay a bit longer, I would highly encourage that. Some things that you can have with you for this practice are a yoga mat, if you have that, or carpet or rug that you can practice on, it's a little bit softer. If you have something like a cushion that you can sit on, or if you have a block that you can sit on. If you're at home and you don't have a lot of these props, maybe you have a really thick textbook that you can sit on, something like that. So that as we begin the practice in this seated position, the hips are elevated a little bit up. This helps to tilt the pelvis so we have less rounding in the spine and so you can just sit more comfortably. So we'll start the practice here. And Liam is with me today to practice as well. So we'll demonstrate how some postures can look in different bodies. So to start, get really comfortable. You can sit cross-legged like we are or onto your knees. The hands can rest down wherever is comfortable onto the knees thighs into the lap. So take a few extra moments here, get really comfortable so we can sit for a few minutes to begin the practice. You can close your eyes if that feels okay or you can just gaze towards the ground. And take a few breaths here so you can Settle into your posture, into your body. And so start by emptying your breath out completely. Take a nice full deep inhale. And let it out the mouth. Again, inhale fully. Exhale out the mouth. One more time, inhale. Exhale. And then you can gently press your lips together to keep them closed. Let the breath naturally flow in and out through your nose. This practice we're taking today, I'll offer a lot of moments of silence so that you can really tune into your physical body. You can tune into the rhythm of your breath and you can potentially notice what thoughts come into the mind. Acknowledge them, see them there, and then allow them to fade away knowing that you can come back to them after the practice is complete. And you can take your hands now into a prayer position right in front of the chest. So pressing the palms slightly in together. And here is a space for you to set an intention for this practice today. So take a few moments to listen for what comes up for you. 
And you can find a word or phrase, a feeling that you want to create in this practice. Or you can make a dedication to someone, to who you're practicing for today. So get really clear as to what your intention will be. And then silently repeat it to yourself three times. When that's complete for you, you can let the hands fall back down into the knees a lot. We're going to move into our first shape, which is a Bhadakanasana, a butterfly pose. So you can stay sitting up onto something or you can come onto the ground. You're going to extend your legs out, create a diamond shape here. So the feet are going to be pressed together. The feet can be close to the pelvis or they can be a little bit farther away depending on how tight potentially the hips are feeling. And then if you do have your props, your blocks, the knees are a little bit more elevated, you can place the blocks underneath your knees. On the other side. So you want to get really comfortable here so that you can sit, spend some time here. So get really fussy. You can Make sure the posture is as comfortable as you need it to be. So that you're feeling just enough sensation through this opening through the hips, through the legs. But you can still breathe here easily. And know that if any point there is pain in the body, then you can come back up. Maybe you extend the legs, shake them out, and then you can come back in. Or play with, do you need to bring the feet closer or the feet farther apart? And so we don't want yoga to be hard. We want it to be a challenge for you. And so once you've found this place, it's just enough of a challenge. Like I said, you can still breathe easily in and out. And just tuck the chin slightly, let the head melt down towards the ground. And your hands or whatever is comfortable onto the feet, onto the ground. And the best part of these more restorative, slow practices is that many postures, you can just close the eyes. This will also limit distractions, the eyes looking around. Fortunately for this practice, you can't look at many other people to see what they're doing. You just get to be in your home and focusing on what feels best in your practice. So we'll be here for about one more minute. Now slowly, even slower than you want to go, you can start to lift your torso back up. And remove any blocks or props that you had with you. And then extending your legs out. I'll come a little bit farther forward here. We'll get Liam to come a little bit farther back. So we set up for the next pose going to be a little bit more of an active variation here. So you're going to bend your knees and take the feet about mat width distance and bring the hands to start back behind the body. So you're in a relaxing on the beach type posture. 
fantasizing for when that time comes. We're gonna start with some windshield wipers with the legs. So you're gonna take your knees over to the right. Just let them fall as close to the ground as they can come. And then take them back up through center and drop them over to the left. So moving slowly here, up through center, over to the right. And up through center, over to the left. One more time each side, up through center, over to the right, and back through center, and to the left. So you come up back through center this time. You're gonna walk the hands back up so that you're seated here and you can extend the arms forward. So you may have to adjust the position of your sit bones. You're gonna take your arms out in front of you, interlacing the fingers, sit up nice and tall here. And then to start, we're going to take the knees over to the right, extend your arms all the way over to the right side as much as you can go. Press your knees down towards the ground. And then we'll come back through center and find that nice tall seated position again. And then over to the left, arms extend out to the left side, your knees come down towards the ground. And then we'll come back up through center. We'll go twice more each side. So over to the right. Back up through center. And take an inhale here. And exhale to the left. Inhale back through center. And exhale to the right. And this time we'll create more of a passive stretch here so you can release your hands. Bring them down towards the ground. They can be over top of the knee. It'd be hard to see me here. So bring your hands either, just either side of the knee. This can be easier here. And maybe you start to lower the chest farther down, come onto your forearms. If you want it to be a little bit more challenging, the hands come to frame the foot. And if you have a bolster, you can use that to lower the hands onto. We want this to be more passive now. So see where you can let go of any holding in the body. And just keep breathing here. And a couple more breaths. And then next inhale, come back up with the torso. You can connect your fingers, interlace them once again so that you can come back up through center on your inhale. Maybe you have to adjust your position a little. And then exhale, we come over to the left. And then this time again, you can plant the hands either side of the knee or either side of the foot. Coming down to forearms or staying upright. You're always checking in with what works best for your body. So like I said in the first pose, you come to a comfortable position where you can close the eyes. And this also helps to remove any of that expectation on what the shape should look like. And so you can tune into what your physical body feels. A couple more breaths here. See how you can soften a little bit more. And then next inhale as you rise the torso back up. One more time to interlace the fingers. Press the palms together. And then we come back up through center. Let's release the hands now. Release the legs. We're going to straighten the legs out for a seated forward fold. So again, for a lot of people, it might be nice to sit up onto something. If your tendency in this posture is to round the spine like this, then it's even more beneficial to sit up onto a prop. 
so you can have a nice tall spine. So take an inhale here where you are, and then exhale, melt the chest forward any amount. We then can let the spine round here so it becomes a softer variation. And maybe you even bend the knees. If they're really feeling tight, really stiff here, you can bend the knees. And your hands can be soft on either side of the legs. Maybe you want the palms facing up, more of a gesture to receive. So get comfortable in your variation. And then again, you can close the eyes and just breathe here. slowly we rise back up. We're going to bend our right leg and bring the sole of the foot to the inside of the thigh. So again, stay seated onto the ground or up onto something if you have that available. And you can bring a block underneath this knee if it's too high. You want something to just rest the leg into so that it can be as passive as possible. Okay, so on your inhale here, sitting tall, and then exhale again, we can allow the spine to round, melt the chest forward. But this is more of a restorative practice, so we don't need to make this posture active. You don't need to reach or grab onto anything. You can just simply melt the chest and receive. Paying more attention here to this external rotation we created with the hip and how we're letting this hip open up. Inhale, rise back up. Bring your right knee in towards your chest and then step your foot over top of the left knee. We're gonna take a twist here. So your right hand can reach back behind you. Your left arm can reach up for a moment so you create that nice tall spine. And then as you exhale, hug that right knee in towards the chest twist and look over your right shoulder. And we don't need to make this as active. You can let your left foot be soft. And a little bit of engagement here through the core. And this is where we want the twist to be through that low belly. Helps to support digestion. Always twisting first towards the right. Inhale, you can come back through center. Just take a gentle twist in the opposite direction. And then releasing the leg. We'll switch to the other side. So bend your left foot. Bring the sole of the foot to the inside of your upper thigh. And again, sit up onto something. If you need. And set up your posture here. Your chest is square over your leg. On your exhale, you melt the chest forward, reaching down anywhere that the body allows. And you can move as slowly as you'd like to come into these shapes. Using your breath as that guide, each inhale to find some length, and each exhale to soften, to let go. And breath is one of our best tools here to be connected to our practice and to stay focused on the pose. 
and being in this practice. So if you find the mind is starting to wander, it's wondering how long you're going to be practicing what's next. Just see if you can take your attention to just focusing on your breath. And so watching your inhales and exhales, making them smooth. Next inhale, we'll come back up. Bring that left knee up towards the chest and cross the left foot over the right knee. And bring your left arm back behind you. Right arm reaches up for that tall spine. And then exhale, hug the knee in. Look over your left shoulder. So again, the twist here is coming from the low belly. We're experiencing this widening across the shoulders, but we don't want to just twist through the upper back. We want the whole back involved. So bring a little bit of engagement here to that low belly. Through center, straightening through the legs. You can take that counter twist I forgot on this side, just gently to the other side. And then coming back through center, straightening the legs, and now we're going to come onto our backs. So we're just going to readjust here. So I'll come in front, and Liam will come to the back. And then come all the way to lie flat on your back. We're going to take a bridge pose so that we can um, take a symmetrical pose since we've taken a few asymmetrical postures. So you're going to bend the knees and bring the heels close in towards the sit bones. So we'll set Liam up here first. And then if you do have a block, this is great to use. The pose can be a lot more passive. So you're going to press through your hands and feet and lift your hips up towards the sky. And then Liam can choose if he wants to put place a block underneath the sacrum. So it may take a little bit of adjusting to get the block in the right position here. And you can use different heights. So he's got quite a strong variation here, the highest height of the block. You can go medium height, lowest height. Whatever feels most comfortable here. And it's a lot more passive here with the block or if you have a book or something at home. So it's continuing that pattern for this being a more restorative practice. I'm giving here the hips a break and allowing them to lift up and open. So taking a few more breaths here in your posture. And then pressing again through your hands and feet to lift the hips up so you can remove the block safely. And slowly lowering all the way down onto your back once again. We're going to take the right foot now, bring it up and cross it over top of the left knee, just in front of it. So you're in a figure four like posture. Quick adjustments here so you can have a better view of both of us. So you're lying flat on your back like Liam is. You've crossed that right foot in front of the left knee. This could be enough of a stretch for your hips. And we want to keep it a little bit more passive here too. The arms can be alongside the body like they are for Liam or you can take your arms out to a T position. And then if you do want a little bit more here, you can place a block underneath the left foot so Liam can lift it up. We'll place a block there for him to rest his foot into. So it still makes the pose a little bit more passive. So he just doesn't have to work as hard. But it's a little bit of a deeper stretch for him. So taking a few more breaths here. And then 
we're going to remove the block if you do have one underneath your foot. Keep your legs as they are and Liam will take his arms out to a T position. Or if there's a couch or something in the way, you can bend your arms to 90 degrees, take cactus arms. And then he's going to allow his legs to fall over towards the left. So right sole of the foot and left knee come down towards the ground for a spinal twist. There are many different variations of a spinal twist that you can take. So if this isn't comfortable, you can unbind the legs and just take both knees over to the left. You can also wrap the right leg around the left in more eagle-like legs in the posture. Mm -hmm. So you can find here what is the comfortable spinal twist for your low back. And then take a few breaths here. then on an inhale using a little bit of strength from the core he'll come back up through center and bring that right foot back down to the ground then he can straighten out the legs if he wants take a quick moment to release the legs and then bending the knees again soles of the feet come onto the mat take the other side so left foot comes over top in front of the right knee. So in our figure four like posture once again. And then he can stay as is or we can place a block again underneath the right foot this time. Being that nice stretch through the hip. you have a block underneath the foot, we'll remove it. And then lowering the legs over to the right this time. And so left sole of the foot, right knee comes down onto the ground. And then Liam can here choose again what is the best twist for him. He can stay as is. He can release this left foot and just bring both of his knees over towards the right. Or he can also wrap that left leg around the right really more tightly this time to take a twist. And we still want the shoulders to be soft down towards the ground. So finding the twist that works best for you today in this practice. And then take a few more breaths. And now as Liam takes an inhale, his legs will come back up through center. And again, as we just took a few asymmetrical postures, we're going to finish with one last symmetrical pose. So Liam's going to take his legs straight up towards the sky. The arms can be out to a T, or it's best with this one to actually have the arms alongside the body. Then if he wants a little bit more, he can lift his hips up and place a block underneath the sacrum. So again, there Liam can play and find the best spot for the block to be underneath the sacrum, what feels most comfortable for him. And we do a lot of work on our legs, walking, sitting, running, doing many different activities. So it's so great to take inversions like this. Have the legs up so the blood can pool down out of the feet, out of the legs. And so taking a few more breaths here. And 
And then when you're ready to come down, you can bend the knees and maybe place one foot at a time down onto the ground or both feet. Oh, he took his block first, so you can take your block out at any point. And then now we're coming into Shavasana. So you can lay nice and flat here. And take as much space up as you can. Take the arms nice and wide, the legs nice and wide. The palms can face up towards the sky, so again, creating this gesture to receive. You can take a couple of cleansing breaths here as you are slowing down the body, getting it ready to take rest. So you can take an inhale to fully fill up the body. And then again, exhale out the mouth. Inhale to fill all the way up. Exhale out. One more time, inhale. This time you can let out with a sigh if you'd like. Ah. And letting the body fully drop into this place of rest. No need to hold on to anything else. And let the body and let the mind be soft. Let you enjoy a couple minutes of rest here. Like I shared at the beginning of practice, if you have more time to stay longer, then please do. This is one of the most important postures of the practice is when you lay and rest and you allow all the work that you did with the postures to allow the effects to seep into the body. And when you're ready to come out, you can first start to deepen your breath. And you start to bring the awareness back into your physical body by taking some gentle movements, moving fingers and toes. You move in a way that you like to wake the body up out of rest. I often like to reach the arms up overhead, bring the legs together and really reach, take a nice long stretch. And then slowly you can start to make your way up to a seated position. It can be nice to first hug the knees in and roll on to your side. Taking this beetle position like Liam is for a moment here, letting the head rest into your arm. Letting it be still a little bit softer before you come up to seated. And then pressing down with your hand, you can lift up. And again, we'll take our seated position that we took at the beginning of practice. And sitting up onto something, if you have that available to you, cross-legged or onto your knees. Letting your hands rest down into the lap or wherever they want to fall. And letting the eyes rest, gazing down towards the ground or eyes closed. And here again in this seated posture, this meditative posture, we have the opportunity to observe the effects of our practice. So you can notice here if there's any changes through the physical body. And notice here the quality of both your breathing rhythm and the quality of the thoughts within your mind. And so this seated position is a place for us to observe what's happening in our whole experience, physical body, breath, and mind. And 
And then again, we'll take the hands into a prayer position, Anjali Mudra. You can bring back in your intention here that you set for the practice or your dedication. And again, repeat that intention or dedication just silently three times to yourself. And you can close off your practice any way that feels best for you. Thank you everyone who ends up watching this video and coming through this practice with us. Um, again, really important here, if you do have more time, stay in these postures a little bit longer. Take up to a couple minutes in each and slowly move from one to the next. I hope you all are well and I hope to see you very soon back in the gym. Thank you. Namaste.